The day we're taking a look at these NCAA B matches, which are happening on Tuesday, December 6, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. Also, check out our perks and join the High Stakes membership. Joining the High Stakes membership is easy, is cheap, but it will help a lot in the growth process of this channel. Plus if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. One more thing before we start, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions, you will find the link in the description and comments section below. And make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. UNC Wilmington vs East Carolina. The Pirates have won 6 of their last 9 games. They are playing very well offensively, even on the road where they are averaging more than 72 points per game. They shoot the ball well from the free throw line, and they are very aggressive on the offensive glass, which will give them more scoring opportunities. They also don't turn the ball over a lot, and won't give the Seahawks a lot of easy scoring opportunities. Even though the Seahawks play good defense, they have struggled against good offensive teams, and will have a hard time slowing down the Pirates in this game. The Seahawks have also won 6 of their last 9 games, but they have struggled offensively, scoring less than 60 points per game, they haven't shot the ball well, making less than 40% of their field goals, and 30% of their 3-pointers. Their ball movement isn't very good, and they don't rebound the ball as well as the Pirates. Even though the Pirates aren't very good defensively, the Seahawks will have a hard time keeping up with them, so go with East Carolina to cover the spread. Take East Carolina Pirates. The Pirates snap their two-game losing streak with a win over Campbell in their last game. They will try to keep the momentum going with a win over the Seahawks, which will give them their second win in a row and fourth win in their last six games. East Carolina is averaging 74.8 points per game. They scored 79 points in their last game, making 46.4% of their field goals and 44.4% of their three-pointers. RJ Felton led the Pirates with 25 points and 4 rebounds. Brandon Johnson finished with 16 points and 10 rebounds, while Jaden Walker added 13 points and 5 rebounds. East Carolina has struggled defensively, giving up 70.8 points per game. They gave up 69 points in their last game and will need a similar effort if they want to get the win. Take the under here. Wisconsin Green Bay vs Loyola Chicago. Green Bay was in action in a Horizon League clash with the UPE on Monday afternoon, in a strange scheduling quirk, as they play two games in two days with this contest. The Phoenix come into this game 1-7 overall and 1-1 in Horizon League action this season. Against the UPE, Green Bay led 6-0 early, only to trail 22-21 with 4.49 to play in the first half. The Phoenix regrouped by closing the first half on an 11-2 run to lead by 8 at intermission. The Phoenix never let the Jaguars closer than four in the second half, as they held the UPE at arm's length to earn the victory. Green Bay shot 46.8% from the floor, including an 8 of 20 performance from three-point range, and forced 17 turnovers to offset 17 turnovers of their own. Zay Blake led the Phoenix with 20 points in the victory. The Ramblers stand 296th in the nation in scoring offense, as they put up an average of 66.9 points per game on the season. Loyola Chicago collects 34.3 boards per night and rank 194th in assists by dishing out 13.4 dimes a night. The Ramblers are below average on the defensive end as they are 255th in the nation by allowing 72 points per contest. Philip Alston leads the Ramblers in scoring as he puts up 12.3 points and 5.8 rebounds per contest this season. Ben Schweiger, 10.4 points, and Markwise Kennedy, 10 points, are good scoring options as well. 
Brayden Norris, Tom Welch, Bryce Golden, St. Thomas, Sheldon Edwards, Jalen Quinn and Jaden Dawson, all are secondary options on the offensive end of the floor for coach Drew Valentine. Loyola Chicago shoots 46.5% from the field as a team on the year. The Ramblers connect on 6.9 three-pointers per contest, while shooting 30.9% from beyond the arc. Loyola Chicago is converting 68.1% of their attempts at the free throw line this season, a number they'd like to improve a bit. Both teams have had their issues at times this season. Green Bay dropped each of their first seven games by double digits, which is a major concern if you want to try and back them. On top of that, the Phoenix are playing the second game of a back-to-back -back situation, as they were slated for the rare noon Eastern time tip against UPE Monday. That means they have to play the game at home, then make the trip to Chicago for this contest. Loyola Chicago let one slip away against DePaul and have dropped five of their previous six entering this game. With that said, they are at home here and they have the rest advantage going for them. With the Phoenix buttering on both ends of the floor, you can't like their chances here. Look for Loyola Chicago to get back in the win column by prevailing here. Take Loyola Chicago Ramblers. The Ramblers have a 3-5 record overall despite being the betting favorite in 7 of 8 games. In their most recent game, Loyola lost in overtime to DePaul, despite leading the game 37-24 at halftime. DePaul was a one-point underdog and gave the Ramblers their first home loss of the season. This is a very low line, the second lowest Loyola has had all season, since the line was 126 against Boise State. The lowest over and under line Green Bay has seen was 127 against Utah Valley State, and that game went over as Green Bay lost 56-79. Green Bay has seen the total go over 6 out of 8 games. The line is low based upon Green Bay's travel schedule. They will come in tired and struggle to score, but they will also struggle to defend against this well-rested Ramblers team. If two of the top three scorers go off for the Ramblers, this total should soar way above this low number. Take over 128 points. North Texas vs Utah Arlington. Arlington has been unable to overcome some bad offensive numbers so far this season, as its defense has been solid for the most part. The Mavericks have been able to hang tough with a few Power 5 teams so far this season, as Oklahoma State barely won by double digits as a 20.5 point favorite in the beginning of November. Their other game against a Power 5 team came on Friday night, when LSU escaped with a 63-59 win as a 19-point favorite. The Mavericks took the lead with 6.49 left in the game, and Reed took the lead with 4.12 remaining, but they did not score again until there were 22 seconds left. Arlington might have the worst shooting percentage in college basketball, but it has proven its worth as a large underdog. The Mavericks used their strong defense and slow tempo to push Oklahoma State and LSU until the very end. They are facing a North Texas team that plays at one of the slowest paces in the country, making every point very valuable in this matchup. The Mean Green have relied on their outside shooting offensively, which does not bode well in a road game. They are going to be at a height disadvantage as well in this game, so I am happy to back Utah Arlington as a double-digit underdog. Take Arlington plus 11 points. The North Texas Mean Green have been doing well and are trying to continue their domination after a 75-45 home win against the Omaha Mavericks. They dominated in the second half as they outscored Omaha 46-23. They shot the ball well as they were 26 of 59, 44.1% overall, 10 of 25, 40% from the three, and 16 free throw attempts. Junior forward Abu Ausmane led the team as in 24 minutes he finished with 19 points, 8 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. Defensively, they need to continue what they are doing as they allowed 31.4% from the floor and 11.8 from deep here. North Texas needs to continue doing well as they force 10 steals and 4 blocks throughout the game. Looking at the offensive production in the previous five games, North Texas is averaging 67.8 points per game, while Utah Arlington is scoring 64.2 points per game. The ability to knock down free throws is critical, and neither team has been doing well, as the Mavericks are 297th in the country, shooting 65.5% from the charity stripe, while the Mean Green are 226th in the sport, with a 68.8 free throw percentage as a program. All in all, go with the under in this game, as it seems to be the better play in this game.